Located in Florida and dating back to approximately 15 million years ago during the Miocene, the Alachua Formation represents a wide idea of the biodiversity at this age. During this period, Florida had a climate and landscape quite different from what is observed today. In this period, the climate was generally warmer and wetter than the present day. Shallow marine environments likely existed along the coastlines of the Alachua Formation. Fossilized marine organisms like gastropods, bivalves, and foraminifera indicate the presence of nearshore and offshore marine ecosystems. The sharks of the genus Carcharhinus, which still exist today, already inhabited the continental oceans during this period. In fact, this genus has been in existence for 40 million years, which explains the diversity of species found in the rocks of this formation. Thekachampsa, like other tomistamines of the Oligocene and Miocene, was considerably larger than living crocodilians. Like living gharials, it had a long, slender snout. The teeth were long and recurved. However, unlike its living relatives, it was marine, inhabiting estuaries and shallow coastal waters. Other marine fossils such as sea snail and bivalve shells, shark teeth and barnacles have been found alongside remains of Thekachampsa. Unlike modern Cyrenians, Metaxetherium is known from a multitude of environments that it shared with other species of sea cows. A variety of anatomical adaptations can be directly tied to differing foraging habits and dietary preferences. This includes the degree to which the snout is downturned, the size and shape of the tusks and naturally body size. Phylogenetic analysis suggests that Metaxetherium is a paraphyletic genus with close ties to the Hydrodomalini, sea cows native to the colder waters of the northern Pacific, including the giant stellar sea cow. The coastal and marsh ecosystems of the formation reveal surprisingly familiar animals, many of which include species that still inhabit Florida today. The explanation is straightforward, Florida continues to be a coastal and marshy environment, and species that were already adapted to these ecosystems over 15 million years ago did not need to undergo significant adaptations in their evolution to persist to the present day. If ecosystems remain stable, life remains stable. Many species of frogs and toads have been found here, particularly of the genus Rana. They are excellent jumpers due to their long, slender legs. The typical webbing found on their hind feet allows for easy movement through water. The famous boa constrictor, found today in South America, inhabited the marshes of Florida 15 million years ago. They generally live on their own and do not interact with any other snakes unless they want to mate. They are nocturnal, but they may bask during the day when nighttime temperatures are too low. As semi-arboreal snakes, young boa constrictors may climb into trees and shrubs to forage, however, they become mostly terrestrial as they become older and heavier. As with the Anurans, many semi-aquatic turtles with modern relatives have been found in this ecosystem, such as Deirocles. These turtles inhabit shallow, still or slow-moving bodies of water with plenty of vegetation and a muddy substrate. 
They are not found in rivers or deeper lakes that may be home to predators such as alligators and large fish. The chicken turtle is predominantly carnivorous and feeds mostly on invertebrates such as crayfish, dragonflies and spiders, but is also known to eat tadpoles, carrion and occasionally plant material. Macrochelys are primarily found in freshwater habitats such as rivers, lakes and swamps. They prefer slow-moving waters with abundant vegetation and submerged structures. They are generally solitary and can spend extended periods submerged in water. They are well adapted to their aquatic lifestyle and are strong swimmers. They are among the largest freshwater turtles in the world, even during the Miocene. They have a distinct appearance with a large head, strong jaws, a spiked shell and a worm-like lure on their tongue used to attract prey. Apollone turtles are fast swimmers that chase down their prey in water. They feed mainly on fish. They also like the comfort of sand as their bedding. This type of turtle has existed since the Cretaceous period, having survived the mass extinction that eradicated non-avian dinosaurs. Large male alligators are solitary territorial animals. Smaller alligators can often be found in large numbers close to each other. The largest of the species defend prime territory, smaller alligators have a higher tolerance for other alligators within a similar size class. Although the alligator has a heavy body and a slow metabolism, it is capable of short bursts of speed, especially in very short lunges. Alligators' main prey are smaller animals they can kill and eat with a single bite. They may kill larger prey by grabbing it and dragging it into the water to drown. Fossil anhingidae are known since the early Miocene, a number of prehistoric darters similar to those still alive have been described, as well as some more distinct genera now extinct. The diversity was highest in South America, and thus it is likely that the family originated there. Some of the genera which ultimately became extinct were very large, and a tendency to become flightless has been noted in prehistoric darters. Cormorants have a streamlined body, a long neck, and a hooked bill. They have webbed feet, which makes them powerful swimmers. Their plumage is often dark in color, and they have a characteristic posture with outstretched wings for drying. They are skilled divers and can swim underwater to catch fish. They have reduced buoyancy compared to other water birds, which allows them to dive more effectively. Inhydrotherium presence in both Florida and California suggest it dispersed westward from the Gulf of Mexico into the eastern Pacific through the still open Panamanian Seaway. This predicts that its fossils should be recovered in late Miocene marine deposits in Panama. The fossil species Regmanornis, based on a fragmentary tarsometatarsus from the lower Miocene deposits. It was probably the oldest known turkey and is much smaller than modern members of the family. As shovel tusk to mebelodonts, conobelodon has two pairs of tusks, one growing from the upper jaw and a second from the lower. It is estimated to have had a body mass between 300 to 700 kilograms, making it generally larger than most gomphotheres on account of its thicker limb bones. Conobelodon is suggested to have been a browser, based on dental microware analysis. The upper tusks were likely used for slicing and scraping, 
while the lower tusks may have been used for digging. Mustelids began to emerge during the Oligocene in North America. This new form of small predators demonstrated a high adaptability and quickly proliferated worldwide. Oligobunies is an example from the Miocene of Florida. Zodiolests is primarily known further north on the continent, with fossils discovered in the Great Plains associated with Paleocaster. The species found in the Alachua Formation appears to be slightly more arboreal. Bear dogs can often be divided into North American and Eurasian genera, but Sinalos is one of the few genera that what active across both of these areas as well as Africa, a range proven by the discovery of multiple remains on all of these continents. The skulls of Maricoidodon have a pit in front of the eyes. Similar pits are found in the skulls of modern deer, where they contain a scent gland used for marking territory. Although it was not directly related to deer, it seems likely that it possessed a similar gland, which may imply that it, too, was territorial. Oreodonts lived in large herds and moved about from place to place. Peccaries first appeared in North America during the Miocene and migrated into South America during the Pliocene, Pleistocene as part of the Great American Interchange. Floridacurus was a member of these early peccaries, they are social creatures that live in herds. They are omnivores and eat roots, grubs, and a variety of other foods. Archaeohippus is noted for several distinct skeletal features. The skull possesses deeply pocketed fossa in a notably long preorbital region. The genus is considered an example of phyletic dwarfism with adults estimated at being on average 20 kg in weight. This is in contrast to the most common equid of the period, Myohippus. Ankytherium was around 60 cm high at the shoulder, and probably represented a side branch of horse evolution that left no modern descendants. The oldest representatives of the modern genus Tapyrus appeared in Europe during the mid-Miocene, with Tapyrus dispersing into Asia and North America by the late Miocene. Like the peccaries, Tapers dispersed later into South America during Pleistocene as part of the Great American Biotic Interchange. However, 15 million years ago they were widespread in North America, including Florida. Species of Hespero testudo varied widely in size, with a large undescribed specimen from the late Pleistocene of El Salvador reaching 150 cm in carapace length, larger than that of extant giant tortoises. Historically considered a subgenus of Geochelon, it is now considered to be distantly related to that genus. Its relationships with other tortoises are uncertain. Pliometanasts and thinobatists were the first of the giant sloths to appear in North America, the former around 9 million years ago. Both were in North America before the Panamanian land bridge formed around 2.7 million years ago, which led to the main pulse of the Great American Interchange. It is then reasonable to presume that the ancestors of Pliometanasts island hopped across the Central American seaway from South America, where ground sloths arose.
it gave rise to megalonics. Their closest extant relatives, based on molecular results, which clash with earlier conclusions derived from morphology, are the extant arboreal three-toed sloths. Two specimens of thinobatists have been estimated to weigh 948 kg and 1066 kg each. Milagolus inhabited grassland and savanna environments. The fossil record suggests that it adapted to open landscapes rather than dense forests. It had distinctive, long, and curved upper and lower incisors, similar to other ground squirrels. This dental morphology is associated with herbivorous feeding habits. It may have created extensive burrow systems for shelter and protection. Barophagus, like other barophagines, are loosely known as bone-crushing or hyena-like dogs. Though not the most massive barophagene by size or weight, it had a more highly evolved capacity to crunch bone than earlier, larger genera such as Epic Yawn, which seems to be an evolutionary trend of the group. During the Pliocene epoch, Barophagus began being displaced by other canid species. As it lacked the adaptations for rapid acceleration, Amphissian seems to have hunted quite unlike lions and tigers, which approached their prey very closely, before overtaking it after a quick burst of speed. However, as even modern pursuit predators such as wolf stalk and ambush their prey, it is likely that Amphissian did the same. It has been proposed that it pursued its prey for longer distances, and at a speed notably slower than modern wolves. After catching up to its victim, it was likely able to immobilize it with its powerful forelimbs. Epic Yawn had a massive head and powerful jaws that were well adapted for bone crushing, with enlarged fourth premolars like some hyenas, giving its skull a lion-like shape rather than having a skull similar in shape to that of a wolf, the adaptation would have allowed Epicyon to scavenge as well as hunt, giving it access to the nutritious marrow other contemporary carnivores couldn't access. Eucyon is an extinct genus of medium omnivorous coyote-like canid that first appeared in the western United States during the late Middle Miocene 10 million years ago. It was the size of a jackal and weighed around 15 kilograms. The lower tusks of aphalops are informative about the sex and age of individuals, as in Teleoceras. Males have much thicker tusks, while older individuals have more strongly erupted tusks showing more extensive wear patterns. The stages in the eruption of the molar-like cheek teeth were identical to living rhinos. Teleoceras had much shorter legs than modern rhinos, and a barrel chest, making its build more like that of a hippopotamus than a modern rhino. It went extinct in North America alongside aphalops at the end of the Hemphillian, most likely due to rapid climate cooling, increased seasonality and expansion some type of grasses, as isotopic evidence suggests that the uptake of these plants was far less than that in contemporary horses. Male Monoceros sported two horns side by side at the tip of the nose, whereas the females were hornless. All other rhino genera, save the related genus Dicerotherium, have their horns arranged one behind the other. Both sexes of Meniseros grew to a length of 1, 5 meters. Since leafy food had become scarce, Parahippus were forced to subsist on the newly evolved grasses that were by now taking over the plains, and their teeth adapted accordingly. The extramolar crest that was variable in Myohippus became permanent in Parahippus. 
The molars developed high crowns and a hard covering for grinding the grass, which was typically covered with high silica dust and sand. The genus is considered to represent an ancestor to Hippotherium. Its fossils have been recovered from as far south as Mexico. Fossils have been found in the Great Plains and Rio Grande regions of North America, Mexico, Florida and Texas, which shows that they were herding animals. Hipparion resembled the modern horse, but still had two vestigial outer toes, in addition to its hoof. In some species, these outer toes were functional. It was about 1.4 meters tall at the shoulder. Nanippus is an extinct genus of three-toed horse endemic to North America during the Miocene through Pleistocene. This ancient species of three-toed horse grew up to 1 meter and weighed between 70 to 100 kilograms, which was around the same size as a domestic sheep. E.P. Camilla's strange body structure gives information on its mode of life and habits. It obviously inhabited dry grasslands with groups of trees. It is presumed to have moved about singly or in small groups, like today's giraffes, and like them, browsed high up in the trees. In this respect, it had no competitors. It survived a relatively long time, through most of the Miocene epoch, and died out prior to the start of the Pliocene, possibly due to climatic changes. Hemiochenia is a genus of laminoid camelids that evolved in North America in the Miocene period. This genus diversified and moved to South America in the late Pliocene approximately 3 to 2 million years ago, as part of the Great American Biotic Interchange, giving rise to modern lamines. The monophyly of the genus has been considered questionable, with phylogenetic analyses finding the genus to paraphyletic or polyphyletic. Pediomerix was the largest of a group of antelope-like things called the Cranioceratini, of which Cranioceras itself is the best known. The latest members of this group all had these three horns, two over the eyes and one from the back of the skull. Apparently, they were covered with skin and hair, like the horns of a giraffe. The points of these horns were not sharp, so they wouldn't have been very good at stabbing. The most striking feature of the protocerateids were the male's horns, growing both above their eyes and on their nose. Some had a pair of nose horns, but in others, like Prosynthetoceras, the pair was fused into a single long horn that forked at the tip. Since females had either much smaller horns or none at all, it these features were probably used for sexual display or sparring over mates, similar to modern deer's antlers. Synthetoceras was one of the largest protocerateids, standing about 1.1 meters tall at the shoulder. Its two nose horns were partially fused into a single long structure with a forked tip, which may have been used for sparring in a similar manner to the antlers of modern deer. Meanwhile on a different branch of the ruminant family tree, closer related to deer and giraffes, a group known as the Paleomericids independently developed a similar sort of extra head appendage but at the opposite end of their skulls. <laughs>